Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. A very grave misconception which is found regarding Islam and the concept of jihad is the notion that our jurists think that it is the religious obligation, it is the religious collective obligation of all Muslims to wage war against kufr or disbelief and forcibly subdue them and to keep them into subservience. In other words, they think that disbelief or kufr does not have the right to rule in this world. It must remain subservient to Islam. And although it's not an uh, obligation on each and every Muslim, however, this jihad or this uh, sort of a campaign is imposed on Muslims in their collective capacity. So therefore, it is essential for the Muslim rulers to wage war against disbelievers and to forcibly subdue them to the subservience of Islam and to impose jizya on them. Now this uh, notion, I'm afraid, is an absolutely flawed notion and it has arisen by not understanding an established practice of the Almighty which is mentioned in the Quran. The Quran says that the Almighty uh, punishes people who deliberately deny the truth in the times of his messengers and he punishes them through these messengers so that this whole exercise can be made a corroboration to the reward and punishment which is going to take place in the hereafter. He punishes people in this world and creates a miniature day of judgment in the times of his messengers of God so that this whole exercise, as I said, can become a substantiation that in the hereafter also people shall be rewarded and punished on the basis of their deeds. Now, it is not by understanding this practice of God that this erroneous concept has arisen that uh, war against kufr has to be waged by Muslims in their collective capacity. So, when the last time this miniature day of judgment took place in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, uh, it was clearly stated that these deliberate deniers of the truth shall be punished in varying degrees. Amongst this punishment was the fact that people who subscribe to polytheism were idolaters and they were they subscribed to polytheism in spite of being convinced that it was untruth, it was totally false. They were punished by the by the death punishment. And this death punishment for the idolaters is mentioned in the Quran in the following words in Surah Tawba. فَإِذَنْ سَلَخَ الْأَشْرُ الْحُرُمْ فَاقْتُلُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَيْسُ وَجَدْتُمُوهُمْ وَخُزُوهُمْ وَحْسُرُوهُمْ وَقْعُدُوا لَهُمْ كُلَّ مَرْسَدْ فَإِن تَابُوا وَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ so when the forbidden months are over, slay the idolaters wherever you find them, seize them, surround them, and everywhere lie in ambush for them. But if they repent from their wrong beliefs and are diligent in the prayer and pay zakat, then spare their lives. God is oft forgiving and most merciful. So this punishment is regarding the, the idolaters who, were, who subscribed to idolatry in spite of being convinced that it was not true. It was totally false. Similarly, people who subscribe to, to monotheism, who are primarily monotheists like the people of the book, they were spared their lives. They were told that if they want to live independently on their own religion, they could do so, but they had to submit to the authority of Islam and they had to remain subservient to the authority of Islam by paying the jizya tax. And this punishment is mentioned in the Quran in the following words. Fight those who believe not in Allah or the last day, nor hold that forbidden which has been forbidden by Allah and His Messenger, nor acknowledge the religion of truth from among the people of the book until they pay the jizya and being subdued, live a life of submission. So these two punishments, as I said, uh, they are, the distinction is made in, the, in this punishment. People who subscribe to polytheism, they are not given any choice to remain on polytheism. They have to either accept Islam or face death. And people who are primarily monotheists, they are given the choice of living on their own religion as long as they remain subservient to Islam. So as I said, this whole exercise specifically related to the messengers of God and the last time it went into, uh, come, came into practice was in the time of the last Prophet Muhammad and in whose times these idolaters and the people of the book were punished. So it is erroneous to say that this was a jihad that was being conducted. It was in fact a divine punishment, a sunnatullah, an established practice of God through which he punishes people who intentionally deny the truth. Today this war can no longer be waged. Today the only jihad which a Muslim state can wage is against oppression, is against injustice, is against uh, is persecution. So therefore the bottom line is that waging jihad against disbelievers is no longer, a, is not, is, it was never a part of the Sharia. It was never a part of the Sharia. It was a divine practice. It was conducted by God, through God, by his messengers and their companions. It does not relate to later Muslims. Akulukhali Haza, wa Staffirullah Ali, wa lakum, wa lisairil Muslimina, wa Muslimat.